all right? This is your fundamentals in this position. So if you don't have grip fighting, closing the distance, and being able to play in a seated position, you're not gonna be able to play a butterfly guard. Backwards, I can wrestle up from this position. So I can be a lot quicker and a lot more athletic. Bring the way forward, bring the way back, and we get our frames and we can start hand fighting from here. All right, so three, two, one. All right, so three, two, one. So when we're playing a seated guard or upright guard, there's a few different ways that Alan can approach my guard. So he can either like step with his right leg forward, he can step with his left leg forward, so he can, he can, he can stand and try pass my guard, or he can do like say, left leg or right leg half kneeling here. And the last one is maybe like down on his knees. And that's the kind of main three ways that people are gonna like say, approach a guard. There is one more where they're like being a little bit more conservative, where it's like if Alan stands up and he's more of a square stance and he's just keeping away from me. So if you go fully standing, yeah, he's not really trying to engage or he might be trying to do outside passing or something like that. But in general, it's going to be someone that wants to try to pass your guard is going to be standing with the right leg or left leg, half kneeling or fully kneeling. So we're going to work from kneeling today, so from butterfly guard. So when we're playing butterfly guard, it's really important that I play on one hip. This puts me in a more athletic position. So what I mean by this is if I stay square, it's hard for me to move backwards fast and come up fast. Whereas if Alan's head is low, for example, I could snap and then we can go into front headlocks. Or if Alan's weight is kind of backwards, I can wrestle up from this position. So I can be a lot quicker and a lot more athletic from this position. So before we actually go into our main techniques, it's really important that we can hold this position because if Alan can just pass my guard, then the, my butterfly guard is gonna be no good or no use. So what I wanna do is I wanna try to keep Alan's shoulders away from my shoulders, so I don't want it to get like set chest to chest, and I want to keep his hips away from mine. So, Alan, if you just kind of like maybe just like flatten me out and then just kind of get fairly high, see the way he's kind of uh, hips are over my hips and he's able to control me, or maybe if Alan just like skips by my guard, so if you kind of pass around and go to side control, you can see now he is chest to chest and, and we can't work our uh, butterfly guard. So, just for now, our drill is basically going to be me trying to keep Alan away with hand fighting. So if Alan tries to come forward, I'm using my feet to keep his hips away, or his knees away, so if you try to come forward, I'm using my hands to keep his upper body away. Does that make sense? So we're just gonna use upper body frames, so mainly the shoulders and the chest, and lower body frames just on the knees, and eventually when we close the distance, feet on the hips. So this is huge if you wanna play a butterfly guard. All right, so we just do a little demo. So you're gonna try to flatten me out for three or four seconds, and I'm just gonna try to keep you away with hand fighting. Try to pressure a little bit, try body lock here and then eventually we can start to get our grips and start sweeping so that's all important all right so three two one i'm just going to add an extra piece on it and a progression to the drill so just want you to know as well for like staying in this square kind of stance position it's not the end of the world just kind of limits our option this is a good position for when i want to elevate and i want to put weight on say my training partner's hands where you can go into different types of sweeps or leg loss or whatever it might be this kind of square stance is better for for this so like whereas i'm just Scoop my hips underneath and put them weight in his hands. But when we play in this kind of stance where we're playing like on, on one hip, it allows me to hand fight a lot better, allows me to wrestle up if his posture allows it, and it also allows me to go into arm drags and stuff like that a lot quicker. The next thing that we want to do is, I don't want to just be defensive and just keep hand fighting. That's a huge power of butterfly guard, but have to be able to close the distance, same way as you would if you were trying to set up a takedown or something like that. So again, so we're hand fighting, and while Alan's thinking about my hands, so we just kind of have like a hand fight here, I'm moving forward, all right? And I do this, but you can see my foot is on his knee, and I'm in this long range position, yeah? And then Alan, you try hand fight, get some grips, you real grips, and I start to scoot forward here. Now my foot is on the inside, and now we can start to get our grips for our butterfly guard. So that's the, the next detail I want to give you is closing the distance, and one more detail that's more kind of defense. If at any stage Alan does manage to get his grips and he does flatten me out here and he uh, claps his elbows around my hips, I have an opportunity really quick to get back to this seat position. So if I'm playing butterfly guard, I have to be in an upright position. So there's two ways we can do this. The first one, which I prefer, is try hand on the shoulder, hand on the bicep, and I go to one side and I free my knee. Now I put my right foot on his hip. So Alan, if you give me a bit of pressure, I push and I go to the other side and I free my second knee we scoot back and then we're back to butterfly guard. 
So again, so I'll need flat nails. So you shoot for a body lock here. So hand on the shoulder, hand on the bicep, foot on the knee. Now I turn to my left side to free my left knee. And these are two really strong frames. So if you try pass from here, it's hard. And all we do is just kick, come back into our seat position. All right, so the last one is Alan manages to get a good lock around my hips. He flattens me out. I'm gonna grab the elbow, shoulders off the floor. I pull Alan's weight forward and just like a rocking chair, we extend and we sit up. All right, so go again. So you just clamp the elbows around the hips. So head off the mat, flare the elbows so we can move our hips. I bring the weight forward and what I do is I roll up into the seat position, foot on the hips and we start to get our grips. So I'll do the two one more time. So first one, Alan flattens me out. Turn to one side, hand on the shoulder, hand on the bicep. I turn to the opposite side to free the second knee. We push, sit back, and then we can start hand fighting again. Second one, Alan flattens me out. Open the elbows, bring the weight forward. My head and shoulders are off the floor. Bring the weight forward, bring the weight back. And then we get our frames and we can start hand fighting from here. All right, so three, two, one. This is your fundamentals in this position. So if you don't have grip fighting, closing the distance and being able to play in a seated position, you're not going to be able to play a butterfly guard. So we have to be able to stay in this position for us to actually attack from this position. So if you can master the stuff that we've just done, uh, along with a few other bits and pieces, you'll be able to spend a lot more time in the position and you'll be able to obviously sweep and attack from this position here. So we can hand fight a little bit. Anytime I can get a grip on my training partner's palms, so the palms of his hands, this is going to be very good to be able to bring his hands out when I'm in butterfly guard and either punch an underhook and then grab a belt grip or maybe if I can't do this I can reach over and take a belt grip all right but just for now we, we work with the underhook and the belt grip so we'll try hand fight a little bit Alan so you try free your hands so I'm going to pull his hands out you can see I've made space my hands are now on the inside I scoop my hip forward and I get a nice bite on this belt here I connect my ear to Alan's shoulder and this hand is gonna come up and fight, all right? So he's gonna try like pose to my head or he's gonna try to get a grip. So as soon as I close the distance, what I do is I take his head to one side and I get the post on the mat. Once post on the mat, I adjust my grip and I grab over to the far side of the hip. I grab the stitching around the armpit of the jacket and I bring his forearm and I lock it into my hip here by putting my elbow underneath. So now if Alan tries to get this left arm out, this is gonna be very hard. So before I sweep, if I just try sweep here, I'm using, like say, a lot of energy and I'm using my muscles in my legs. Whereas if I scoot underneath, now my hips are underneath the center of gravity and it's gonna be an easy sweep. All right, so I'll just do that part one more time. So we're hand fighting here. I get, like say, top hand position. I bring Alan's hands in towards his belly button, outside his hips, and then I get this hip grip here. We off balance to one side. I grab the stitching around the armpit. I put his forearm into my hip and I lock it in with my elbow. I scoop my hips underneath. And now the detail on this is, I wanna put my right foot on the floor, my shoulder on the floor, my head here. And I wanna get my hips higher than Alan's. I'm gonna try to sweep Alan roughly around here at like say a 45 degree angle. And I bring my right foot towards his hip. Put him up on top and get them out. So we'll do it again one more time slow and then we'll do it a little bit faster. So top hand position. Closing the distance, hands are gone outside the hips. I grab the belt, side of my head connects to his shoulder. I put weight onto this left hand here. I grab the stitching on the jacket, put his forearm into my hip, and then I put my elbow over his forearm to lock it in. I scoop my hips underneath. I drop to my shoulder and my right foot and my head. And what I start to do now is lift with my left leg, bring my right leg as close as I can to Alan's hips, and I'm trying to sweep him roughly at 45. Here, and we come up on top, take them out. So we'll do one more time, just a little bit faster. So. There, all right, three, two, one.